Hello, we are building a high power rocket motor. We've got a big launch coming up this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday launches. And this is the 38 slash 240 reloadable case. Uh, it will take a, a couple different motors. This is the H130. Uh, this is the single grain. We've got the delay components here, the nozzle. We've got some uh, O-rings and we've got some insulator rings that we're going to put in here. Now, if you've seen the other video with the 24 millimeter case, there's a few things we need to do. First, always have the instructions out uh, so you know exactly where the components go. If they're in the wrong place, it could be disastrous. First thing we want to do is to grease the O-rings as well as the case and the threads. And just like before, you don't need to you know, get these things completely goopy, you just want to get them shiny. So I just rub a little bit of the super lube on there until they're nice and shiny. A little bit there. And a little on the smallest ring, which is right there. And then let's get the threads and the case. Threads are important. It helps uh, to seal, but it also helps you to get this apart after it has gone off. Uh, this could be pretty filthy inside when you're done. So a little bit of grease on the inside helps all the spent parts to slide out, make it easy to, to clean. Uh, let me just clean my fingers off here. Now we want to do the delay portion first. Now this motor has a 14 second delay built into it. Uh, this is for my son's new Lock Patriot. It uh, has an altimeter that will eject the parachute at Apogee. So we don't really need to fiddle with this delay, but this is his first launch on this particular rocket and with this particular altimeter. So we are going to set a delay that is comparable to what we sim on RockSim. We're going to add a few extra seconds just in case. So this is our fail safe. So if it's 14 seconds, the sim says it should take about seven and a half seconds to hit Apogee. So we could take seven seconds off. I'd feel better taking off maybe five seconds or so. So that leaves us with a nine second delay. That gives us a little leeway because these delays are not surprisingly accurate. There's about a 20% plus or minus on these. So nine seconds should give us plenty of time for the altimeter to do its thing. And if it doesn't, this will only be descending uh, a little bit before the charge goes off. So can we take off five seconds? Well, we need the tool and the tool can take off eight seconds or four seconds. Using the washer, we can make it six or two. So I guess we could try and take off six and maybe I just don't quite drill enough there. Again, this doesn't have to be accurate. I'm just wanting a charge that is our redundant backup. So let's go ahead and, and drill that out. So if I set this to this side here, that is gonna take a, a nice chunk out of there. So that's set for the eight second side. So that just slides in. With the washer, that's going to be six seconds. I'm just going to drill. That feels about right, right there. And just like before, we've got a nice little hole there that will begin burning as the motor is burning. Let me get rid of some of this uh, ejection charge. You want to dispose of that. It tends to stick in the drill, so make sure we get that out. This will go into this ejection uh, sleeve here. Then this little spacer will go on top of there. Now this end that we drilled is the end that is going to go against the propellant and this is the end that gets the spacer. Put the spacer in. Now as you can see there's a little bit of an overhang there. The o-ring very carefully goes on that. Make sure it's not rolled or pinched or anything. Everything looks good. Let me clean off fingers a little bit here. Now, according to the diagram, we want to put a 
um, um, an insulator in first before we put in the delay. So that's going to go in this end, and I'm going to grease the inside of this slightly just to make getting these parts out easier. I do not want to get grease on the bottom of that. That's where the black powder goes. We don't want that to be greasy. Just a little bit on the sides will make cleanup easier. This is the insulator. That goes in. This goes in ring first. Inside there. Okay, now my O-ring fell off. So I'm gonna take it out and put it back on. This ain't rocket science, but it kinda is. And we're gonna put that on ever so carefully and it is a snug fit. Push it in, there we go. In fact, I am not 100% pleased with that. I'm actually going to back that out and take a look. Let's fish that ring out again. Let's do that one more time. Again, better safe than sorry. You do this wrong, you may lose your rocket. Let's put this spacer in there first. I'll ring back on. Make sure that insulator's flat and flush. It is. And we're going in right there. Perfect. Okay. Now, we're going to put the grain in. Single grain. Doesn't matter which end it goes in. You just want it about halfway. So it's just kind of floating in there. And then uh, what you want to do is you want to put in one of these insulators and you're going to put in the smaller diameter. Um, this is, I think, uh, 3 8 by 1 8 inch. That's going to go in your uh, delay will then screw on to that end. Make sure that's seated. And we're just gonna give that a little nudge, it slid out here a little bit, give it a little push. On this end, we get another aft insulator. We get the, uh, the big O-ring in there. This is the thick one, the 3 16th inch one. The nozzle will fit inside that. like that and then this piece will go on there and if you can't get it started back off the forward end a few turns that'll give you enough to get a little purchase on these threads tighten it down tighten the forward tighten the aft there we go all we got to do now is put in the ejection charge and we're ready to launch.